It's the moment we've long been waiting for, but you won't believe all that still needs to happen before the ribbon is cut. I'm Kaylin Rothhouse, and that's me and my first building project and my first power lunch. For as long as I can remember, I've wanted to be a designer. And now here I am, creating functional and fabulous spaces. This is my client, Mark Alfieri, founder and chairman of Brandstar, and that's Carmen, his chief operating officer. They've asked me to take this building and turn it into a modern and efficient workspace. It's going to be a challenge, but in the end, the new space will be functional and most definitely be fabulous. So our 90-day deadline to complete this office space has nearly arrived. And now, we need to add the final touches to this outdoor setting. We only have a short time to get ready for the final reveal, so that Brandstar employees can move in. From the beginning, my design concept was to create a campus for Brandstar. A few months back, we decided on a color scheme. Today I'm meeting with Maxim Construction Group, and I'm going to have them apply three different color schemes to the exterior facade of the building in order for Mark and Carmen to evaluate which color scheme they like best. As the owner of Maxim Construction, Max Sadiq knows all about choosing the right paint for appearance and protection. Well, our company specializes in commercial structures. Uh, we start with the concrete, um, and then we also specialize in protecting the concrete with coatings such as paint and waterproof. We're here today because the building behind me is getting um, fully renovated and the final touch is to paint the building. So we're helping um, the designer choose the right paint so that the building not only looks beautiful but also is well protected. So what we've done here is looking at the existing architecture of the building, we are applying four different colors for all the four different bands. So what we're doing today is actually a very important process in the decision making of the color. To apply the paint sample to the building, let it fully dry over a 24 hour period so that you can see how it's actually going to look. So I've asked Maxim Construction Group, who's going to be painting the exterior of both buildings, to come out and put the three different color schemes up on the wall for us to discuss. Now, I know you guys wanted to add some color. So then in option A2 here, I've brought in some of the blue that's close to the blue in the logo. So it will really complement the look and the feel of the logo, which would be applied to the top band. First impressions are everything, and when you drive up, what our building says, it's got to say Brand Star. And it is going to do that by the paints we pick and the logo that's on the outside of the building. So it's very exciting. Okay, so I'm drawn to number two. Me too. So with the color scheme chosen and approved by Mark and Carmen, we're ready for the Maxim paint team to get started. Okay, so can I explain that uh, she's going to have a commercial building uh, that is going to be part of a complex, so she needed two buildings to match. Basically, she had a few ideas of colors, and we suggested that, first of all, because this is a, a building that is right to, next to the main intersection, that she goes with a paint that is gonna withstand all the pollution that's in the air. So we chose Benjamin Moore Aura, which is acrylic coating that really self-washing with the rain. If there is a wind-driven rain, which we have plenty of in South Florida, the rain will hit the building, the paint will not allow the water to penetrate through, but it will wash everything off. And so the building looks washed every time it rains. Definitely the fact that there are stucco reveals between the colors is great because it separates the colors just enough so they each stand on their own. So these buildings are definitely going to stand out. My design concept has always been to create a campus for Brandstar. My goal was to unify the two existing buildings and create one campus. I've done so by a couple methods. One was with paint, two was with some new architecture, and three, I called my friends again from 290 Signs to help me design some beautiful exterior signage. Now I've been working with 290 Signs since I met Rebecca Tyke, their director of marketing, at the Neocon show in Chicago where I was blown away by their complete platform to customize nearly any kind of signage. One of the things that makes us unique is our ability to work with designers. We provide infinite colors, different materials, different end cap designs, fonts, graphics, whatever they want to create. Signage is super important because it has to be code compliant. For example, the private office, bullpen, conference room signs, and the outdoor parking signs, which I did my best to help Ryan drill holes in the ground for the executive parking spaces. Oh, they look great. After several rounds of drawings, permits, and approvals, 
290 Sign Systems fabricated the bejeweled Brandstar logo that would be placed atop the colored bands of each building, offering an explosion of color for curb appeal. As an interior designer, my work isn't finished just on the interior. We need to do the outside as well. I need to redo the parking lot and landscaping because I rezoned this building from a manufacturing plant into an office space, which requires a lot more parking. For Mark, first impressions are critical. And there's a lot of work to be done to bring some curb appeal. First off, before my design plan for this space can even get underway, demolition of the old concrete is needed, as well as removal of invasive trees surrounding the parking lot. For this, I've turned to Darren from Forever Green Landscaping and Nick and Edgar from US PAVE to get the job done. It's all under the careful eye of construction site supervisor, Mark Furman. For remodeling the existing parking lot, it's very important we don't disturb any utilities in the ground as we move trees, and this way uh, US PAVE could get started on the right foot also. When Kaylin first came to us, you know, her main objective was to do the best job possible. They're gonna spend all this focus time and energy inside the building and on the outside of the building, there needs to be that same amount of focus and energy put into the parking lot area. All the existing concrete poles you guys will be removing and then we have new poles that will be going in. We have some uh, existing concrete poles and lighting that are being removed and we're putting in some new aluminum poles and acuity lighting which is really nice uh, LED lighting and there's a few different locations for our photometrics on the parking lot so we're properly lit and evenly lit all the way around. So the demolition and tree removal work is complete, and now begins the actual site work to create a new parking lot and landscaping for Brandstar. It will mean a lot of people working on site at once, and hopefully staying out of each other's way. We have so many moving parts and pieces with the exterior portion of this building. We have the painters, the landscapers, the pavers, the signage. It's a lot of moving parts and pieces, and I'm really hoping that everyone can work together. You have the landscaper who's putting new landscape in, and U.S. PAVE obviously is doing the restructuring and recreating the new uh, parking lot. The electrician, we need to coordinate with him because he has conduits running through the parking lot. So I was only too happy when Edgar and Nick and his wife Hillary from U.S. PAVE assured me that they would take care of every aspect of turning this old parking lot into a dazzling new parking area for employees. We're gonna take care of every inch of the parking lot. From the moment you step out onto the sidewalk, that's all U.S. paid. Before any asphalt can be laid, however, the soil deep beneath the parking lot must be properly prepared for density tests and the addition of lime rock. We, we test the subgrade first to make sure the, the subgrade is strong enough to, to uh, carry the load. Then, obviously, we make sure that the uh, base rock also is very strong. The asphalt is just the the makeup on the on the pretty face, you know what I mean? If the soil underneath the asphalt is not compacted properly, then the soil obviously will shift with time as it settles down and the asphalt will crack and we will develop cracks on the asphalt. The ultimate goal of US PAVE is to provide a uh, parking lot that is stable and it looks good, not only just uh, uh, in appearance, but also technically as a solid parking lot. The new architecture on the building and the paint colors on the signage can only take you so far for curb appeal. So it's really important that we nail the landscaping and get it right. So I'm excited to see what you brought for me today. Let's run through it and tell me some of your thoughts and your proposal. Okay, since we're talking about the entrance, uh, we thought we would use bromeliads. Mm -hmm. um, they give you a lot of color, um, textures, they look good all year, so we thought we would use them for the entrance so you have a lot of impact there. Okay, in concept, I love it. I love the black rocks, I love the pavers, and the bromeliad, I love that idea. My vision here is to have a lot of impact when you come in on the buildings, at the building at the entrance, and um, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna get color from the foliage rather than flowers, so things look the same all year. So I just met with Darren and Oscar back at the office, and they showed me a wide variety of bromeliads. Now they told me that they got them from a place in Southwest Ranches, Florida called Sunshine Bromeliads Nursery, which specializes only in bromeliads. Owner Rolando Rodriguez is quick to explain why he thinks bromeliads make the perfect landscape for an office space. You know, when a client comes into your office, you want to give that wow factor. Yes. 
and the bromeliads give that with all the different type of colors. So with Darren joining us at the nursery, it was the perfect time to choose the exact bromeliads needed for the office space entrance. This is a plant that I would recommend you guys use. It's the uh, Alcantara Imperialis. What I like about it, especially in the corporate environment, for liability purpose, I guess, mm -hmm. it has, it doesn't have any the spines. Thorns, yeah. It's spineless, and it gives an incredible bloom that's like six feet high, that'll be wow. very, very nice. Okay. We could plant them across the bed and use them for height, and then do smaller ones in between. I love it. Let's do it. Let's put them in the truck. Sure. Yeah. Let's go, Darren. <laughs> Get it done. I really think we've made the right decision in choosing Vermilion plants to really bring some curb appeal and that wow factor to the front of our building. Now, it will take a lot of energy to keep a facility this size humming. And backup power is what Mark needs to keep his company up and running. That's why I turned to Kohler Generators and Ed Del Grande to provide the right size generator for backup power if the need should arise. So Ed, what do you think are some preliminary guidelines when choosing the correct generator for your space? Well, the biggest guideline, if we can take a look in here, Kaylin, is make sure it's sized correctly. Now, these are not do-it-yourself projects, obviously. So you want to go to a place like colagenerators.com. They'll set you up with a dealer who will let you know the size you need. So Ed, walk me through the process of installation for our commercial generator. Usually it starts with the landscaping, the trenching, because they do run on natural gas or propane gas lines, so you usually have to bury those underground, and then you can start work on the concrete pad. That has to be big enough and strong enough to hold a big commercial generator, and with the residential generators, usually we can get manpower to move them in place, but as you know, with big commercial stuff, we needed a crane to put this one on the pad. So now talk to me about how we actually turn the building on in case of a storm or a hurricane here in South Florida. Well, Kaylin, that's another great thing about the COLA standby generators. It's all automatic. Inside the building, you'll have an automatic transfer switch. It's always on standby, and that's how you get the name standby generator. And when it senses there's no power at the street, it'll automatically switch the circuits over, start the generator, and within eight to 10 seconds, you'll have that building up and running. And with a generator this size, you won't notice the difference. So let's say there's a hurricane and power's knocked out here in South Florida for two weeks. How long is this generator gonna last? Another great thing about being natural gas or propane fuel that's uh, running these generators, usually can handle any length of uh, power that's out. So everybody will be in this corporate office getting coffee when there's no coffee anywhere else Well, you know what, I know we, we're kind of <laughs> joking about that, but this is a, yeah, a, a true. true serious point. Yeah. Once you have standby power, whether it's for residential use or commercial use, you're now a safe haven and you can help people in your neighborhood. That's so right. that's no joke. So with the Kohler automatic generator in place and for Evergreen, adding the finishing touch by planting bushes and laying sod around this backup power site, we truly have green energy lying in wait amidst this green landscape. It's a really big day today here for US PAVE. They're finally laying the asphalt and we're very excited to see it all come together. It's a madhouse of activity. It's a totally gorgeous day. We've got rollers, pavers, a truck full of asphalt. It's all gonna happen and I'm so excited to watch. So we made it. So, so we, we made finally it. made it. Yes. We'll have more inspections, of course, yep. but we're here and there's so much going on today and but I'm so excited that we're gonna have a brand new parking lot. Yes, it'll be it'll, it'll be pretty. As pretty as a parking lot can be, that's that's where that's where we're gonna be. And in this case, it's a beautiful parking lot that's also environmentally green. The, the biggest way you're gonna see the uniqueness on this project is is our material that we use for our seal coat. To better protect the asphalt and to give it more longevity, more life in it, you seal coat it. You place the seal coat, and the seal coat is what seals the asphalt from the from the outer element. We figured out a few years ago, how to liquefy tire rubber. It's a blacker finish, it's a more satin finish, it lasts 18 times longer than, than regular steel coats. The green side of it, on this parking lot alone, will recycle about 215 tires. The greening of the Brand Star campus is just getting started, as the forever green trucks roll in, filled with palm trees and plant life. Bromeliads are planted at the front entrance for that splash of color and the holes are dug for the majestic sable palms to stand tall overhead. The first thing you see is the landscaping even before you enter the building, so we want to give you that, that wow factor. Today we're installing the hardwood trees and some palms. Um, we have some silver buttonwoods that we're planting right here, and then behind us is um, the green buttonwoods, so it's a little contrast. You'll plant one of these, and then according to the scale of the drawing, every inch is equal to 20 feet, so the next one is going to go on center 
20 feet from this one. Nearly every type of grass, tree, and foliage you can imagine is being planted today, and our exterior is coming alive. Forever Green has truly lived up to its name with this canopy of green around Brandstar. With all the green landscaping going in around us, we also wanted to make sure we were being green for those employees who drive electric vehicles by providing equipment to charge their cars while at work. For that, we once again turn to Leviton and their electric car charger. So if an employee or visitor is being green by owning an electric car, I've made it part of my design plan to give them a space where they can charge their car while they're busy at work. So as night falls and the outdoor lighting by Acuity lights up the parking lot next to a beaming Brandstar logo, the day we've all been waiting for finally arrives. There's still some final touches to be done in the morning before the grand opening of this office space. Evergreen Irrigation is back to finish up with the irrigation for our new landscaping. US Pave created the curbing and they are now adding pavers to the crosswalk and restriping the parking spaces. And Follett Corporation has sent ice machines to be installed in the kitchen to help keep us cool for the big party. I also wanted to capture the final reveal of this office space through photography. So I've invited architectural photographer Mike Butler for a walkthrough and first glimpse of this office space. Okay, so what we're going to start to do on the walkthrough is I'm going to understand the spaces from your perspective, but also more importantly get a, a sensory understanding of the spaces from uh, the perspective of a user. And through that I'm going to try to transmit that into each of the images. Mike will be using his expertise and equipment to highlight and capture my design. And I can't wait to see the final result. What I really love about Kaylin's design is the fact that everything's been thought out to the nth degree. I see technology being used to its fullest extent, whether that be uh, the way the lights dim down or there's an effervescent smell in the air that they're putting in, which I think is really cutting edge stuff. Uh, and the space is being created to help the workers be productive. In the meantime, the Brandstar employees have been gathering at the entrance for the final reveal. And Mike Butler has volunteered to capture that moment as well. Okay. All right, so we're going to do a couple cheers to get everybody riled up, right? Okay, so I know Todd will make it quick. Okay, on three, we'll all say Brandstar. One, two, three, Brandstar. It's been an emotional time for everyone who's been involved in the creation of this new office space. And as we prepare to cut the ribbon to officially open the doors, no one could be happier than Mark. Wow, we finally made it. Today is an exciting day in Brand Star's journey, and we're about to move into a absolutely fabulous building. This building is one of the most technologically advanced properties anywhere. And on top of that, it is absolutely cool. You guys are amazing people, and I've got to know all of you, and it's been such an, a rewarding experience to design your new corporate headquarters and beautiful new home. And um, here we go. And we're going to cut this ribbon right. and show you guys this space. Woo. So here we go. Doug? Woo. Hey. Hey. Come on in and see your new building. Woo. It's such a rewarding and incredible experience to watch the employees see the space for the first time. I can't wait for them to make this space their own. Oh, and there's more. I can't wait to get started on the next phase of the Brandstar project. You can see more of the final reveal at officespaces.tv. To watch our final episode of the season as Brandstar employees are introduced to their new office space. And see what's ahead for season two of Office Spaces.